It is more important now than ever to learn how we can protect our money. The economy is showing signs of slowing down, which means people might lose jobs, income will fall, and it will be hard to keep money safe. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I want to make today's video a little bit different. We have been talking a lot about the recession coming up, the crisis, the crash, news trying to scare us all instead of talking about how we should keep our money safe in times like this. Obviously that does not sell very well on the news as they like to scare off people. Anyways, in today's video I want to talk about how we can protect our money before and during a recession. If you are new to my channel, welcome, please consider subscribing and smashing that like button since it really really helps the channel out. Okay, so it is not a secret that if we are not well positioned at an economic downturn all the time, it could be really risky. During most financial crises, people lose their jobs, income decreases, which brings a lot of stress and fear. Obviously, there is the other side of the story in which the crisis also provides a lot of opportunities to build incredible wealth if we take advantage of those opportunities. And every single crash, recession and crisis brings tons of opportunities like the ones we are seeing nowadays in the market and many other places. The problem is that normally people wait and wait for the market to drop so that they can start investing and, up and take advantage of these opportunities. For house prices to drop, to start investing, or any asset price to drop to invest in it. But once it drops, they don't invest in it because it seems scary. It truly is really scary to invest money, to take advantage of opportunities without knowing when things will calm down and start going back up, without knowing what will happen tomorrow. And even though in times like this, people should reduce risk while maximizing their return, still have to risk a little bit to be able to take advantage of the possible return. Which is why it is very important to always be prepared financially speaking for any opportunity that might come and you want to be able to take advantage of it without needing that money for your needs because you didn't organize your personal finance situation. So the first thing everyone should do is to live below your means. And even though everybody talks about it as if it were easy, it is not. I know everyone tries to live below their means, even me. But suddenly you find me looking at the new Sony headphones or the new Canon camera or the new iPhone that just dropped. Mostly technology or eating out for me. The thing is that if you are able to live below your means before and during a recession, spending less than what you earn will help you have less stress when things are not okay. Unfortunately, people tend to increase their expenses while their income increases as well and when people get a raise, start thinking about a better car or a bigger home or start spending more money on food, gadgets, things that are not really that necessary. Does it sound boring? Yes. But it is really, really powerful. I said this is very the very first thing you need to do because it is what is going to help you save more money in order to invest or take advantage of any of these opportunities or even sustain yourself during rainy days like a recession. Which is why it is also important to not only rely on one single stream of, of income, millionaires tend to have seven streams of income on average, taking into consideration that we have income earned from your day-by-day -day job, business income if you own a business, interest income from lending money, dividend income, rental income, capital gains, and royalties. And I'm not saying that you should have all of these types of incomes, but should focus on having different ones by doing a side hustle like walking dogs on WAG or start a business, investing in dividend stocks, investing in real estate, and more. This is going to help you basically be more than fine if you lose your day-by-day -day job or if in case your business closes or if no one is renting your rental house at this moment for a few months, you still have other stream of incomes that will help you out during rainy days. Obviously, living below your means and not maxing out expenses from all those incomes. Now, another very intelligent and important thing to think about is debt. Paying off debt does not make sense for every single situation, 
But in other words, the best debt to pay off fast is high interest debt, as we all know, credit card debt and all that. But in other situations, you have to ask yourself if it will be wise to invest extra money that could earn 10% return instead of paying off a debt or a mortgage with a 3% interest rate. It makes sense from a mathematical standpoint, but we also have to take into consideration that our monthly needs will be incredibly lower when we have very little to no debt obligations. Think of how low our monthly expenses are going to be if you have no car payment, no student loan or mortgage in comparison to someone that is drowning in debt. This puts you in a much better position in an event of a recession or any other rainy day. Which is why when I see people paying off their mortgages like JJ did and explained in this video, I believe it is very, it was very intelligent of himself. Don't get me wrong, that could help you increase your wealth as well in the long term, but you need to think about your personal finance situation first. For example, JJ decided to sell almost every stock he owned back in 2021 to pay off the mortgage as he does not have a stable income from a 9 to 5 job because he quit his job and is living off of YouTube and in my opinion it was a very good decision. Mathematically speaking, maybe it was better to invest that money, but as he said, after paying it out, he felt so much better after doing that because he wanted just to make sure that no matter what happens, he still has a house and even more important as he has a family and is looking to achieve financial freedom in the meantime. By actually paying off his mortgage, his monthly expenses decreased significantly and now he has more money to invest or save on a monthly basis while already, already having a house completely paid off. Obviously, this is his situation. Personal finance is personal as the name says it. Sit down, think about your situation and make the best decision that will help you feel better and more relaxed on a daily basis so you can sleep better at night. You're gonna make all the right decisions based on risk and reward and how that fits your financial goals. Now, obviously there are way more methods to protect our money during a recession and from inflation, but I have to say that education is a very important one as well, even though it does not seem like that. Take advantage of the current situation, learn about it, what is happening, what have happened before, how long it lasted, what did investors do at times like that, like those years ago, what are things or feelings people shared, educate yourself about the investing world, about side hustles, everything that could help you find ways to protect your money always, with or without a recession. Remember that according to Akerns, an average recession occurs every four years and lasts about one year and a half according to Akerns. On average, there is a crash in the market every three and a half years and lasts about nine to ten months and the average drop is about 35%. Do not worry because even though it sounds awful, the market tends to recover in less than a year or so, but obviously take that into consideration because things can change. Try to focus more on how to increase your income, how to save more money, live below your means, invest wisely, diversify your investments and not make decisions with your emotions but with your brain so you don't have any regrets after. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know which is your plan to protect your money. Thank you and see you next time.